Most players know by now that Apex Legends is a direct story sequel to the Titanfall series set 18 years after the events of Titanfall 2. In fact, many of the weapons and abilities feel nearly identical to their Titanfall counterparts. But it begs the questions, with so many similarities, where did all the Titans go? Oh, what's up you guys? I'm not amazing, I'm just mediocre, and today we're going to be solving the mystery of the disappearing titans, and the answers to these burning questions just might lie in Bangalore's tragic past, because she herself was a soldier with the IMC. But before we can get into that, we're going to need to recap the events of Titanfall 2 really quick. The Archaeological Research Division of the IMC had uncovered two extremely powerful pieces of ancient alien technology. One of them was the Ark, an extremely powerful energy source, and the another was the Fold Weapon, which had the ability to bend space and time across the galaxy, and they had intended to use it to destroy planets. After a desperate struggle, militia forces were able to prevent the Fold Weapon from firing. However, the planet Typhon was destroyed in the ensuing detonation. This led to many of the IMC forces deserting, leaving the militia to gain the upper hand and setting up the final battle of the Frontier War taking place in the last IMC stronghold in the frontier, the planet Gridiron, and this is where the story of Bangalore comes into play. You see, even though Bangalore did serve with the IMC, she never actually got to fight in the Frontier War because it was pretty much over by the time she was ready to join up. In fact, she was graduating basic training when she was delivered the news that the planet Typhon had been destroyed by a militia forces terrorist attack. That was the story that they had been told. They fell back to the planet of Gridiron, and Bangalore was ready to fight to the last man in order to protect her home. But she was ordered to flee. She was woken up in the middle of the night by her brother Jackson and told there was a skeleton crew on the ship IMS Hestia. They quickly boarded, and it was only then that she was told that they had recovered some piece of technology, hinted at being a piece of the Ark recovered after the destruction of Typhon, and that they would not be staying to fight, but would be using it to flee. The crew of the IMS Hestia was forced into cryostasis, and then the experimental energy source was used to power up the phase tech and hurl them across space towards the Outlands. A trip that would normally take 20 years took only one year, and then afterwards the power source was extinguished and they were trapped in the Outlands. But little did they know, something was following them away from the frontier. Something happened back on the planet of Gridiron. Bangalore still doesn't know if it was caused by their own use of the experimental energy source or if something else happened back on Gridiron when they left, but what can only be described as a massive electromagnetic pulse began to make its way across the universe, shutting down all forms of communication. All satellites, all computers, every power line in existence just shut down for good. And you never knew it was coming because the time it hit you and really you realized what happened, you couldn't warn anybody in the path of it because you couldn't contact them. And it took five years to spread from Gridiron toward the Outlands. Rumors began to spread across the Outlands of becoming increasingly unable to contact and communicate with frontier planets. And so about one year before the blackout arrived, Syndicate-controlled planets forced their technicians to cobble together centuries-old systems in order to have at least some kind of separate line functioning. And by the time the blackout finally arrived in the year 2720, those Syndicate planets with their old technology were the only ones still standing, still left functioning, with any ability to communicate with anyone else across the universe. And so that's how the Syndicate was able to start to take control of the Outlands. 
Not only that, but this blackout event, at least in my eyes, completely explains the lack of titans in the Apex Legends universe. If this massive electromagnetic pulse has been traveling across the universe, shutting off every power source, that would include the batteries that power titans. We have these two massive superpowers, one in the form of the IMC, which has been manufacturing titans for centuries. And then you had the Militia, which by the time of Titanfall 2 were only just managing to be able to create their own Titan chassis instead of trying to recreate ones already developed by the IMC. So it's made clear that the development of a Titan is a very intensive process, which would no longer be possible in a world after a blackout type event where all of the communications, all of your infra infrastructure is completely destroyed. It's just simply not going to be feasible or possible to recreate Titans on a massive scale. That is until just recently when Hammond Robotics finally made their return to the Outlands after a 14 year absence with a shiny new public relations image attempting to distance themselves as far as possible from the IMC and the events of the Frontier War. And this begs the question of what is Hammond Robotics actually up to? What do they want from the Outlands? What really happened back in the final battle of the Frontier War on Gridiron? From all signs, it seems like IMC may have turned out victorious because I don't see any militia forces here. I only see Hammond Robotics. And not only that, the first thing they do when they show up on the scene is drop a massive device known as a Planet Harvester intended to suck the minerals out of a planet. All those raw materials, those raw resources, could very well be going towards rebuilding an army. Rebuilding the titans that they once used to subjugate the people of the frontier, and that they may now use to subjugate the people of the Outlands. They also appear pretty intent on recovering any research and technology that was lost in the Outlands. It's entirely possible that the events of the blackout caused them to lose access to all kinds of research and data that was once at their fingertips, and now they have to rebuild their archives, their library of information. That's why we had to reassemble Ash back in the events of the Broken Ghost Quest. She likely had all kinds of important data stored inside her cranium, and then as soon as Ham Robotics got a hold of it, they literally tossed her in the dumpster. And that's where we got the Season 6 quest line of Pathfinder reassembling Ash, and then her running off with Blisk. We may not have to wait very long to find out what is going on between these two and Hammond Robotics because the Apex Legends devs have stated that Season 9 of Apex will contain quote a ton of Titanfall content and that fans of the Titanfall series will be very pleased by Season 9 of Apex Legends. So I'm very much looking forward to Season 9. It's only a few weeks away, less than 30 days counting. So we can definitely look forward to some amazing pieces of Apex Legends lore dropping in the weeks to come. If you love some Apex Legends lore, you're going to love this video I made talking about all the clues pointing towards Void Walker Wraith actually being a time traveler. Click the video you see on your screen right now if you're interested. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, I'm not amazing. I'm just mediocre and I'm out.